So it's been a strange all day for Nottingham Forest supporters. On the one hand, they're signing one of the best defensive midfielders in the game, while on the other, they're selling an academy product who's Nottingham born and bred to a fellow Premier League club. Needless to say, Johnson is far from a like-for-like -like replacement for Harry Kane, but finding someone to fill the boots of one of the most prolific number nines the league's ever seen was always going to be a tough ask. With this in mind, it's sensible to give Richarlison a go up top while bringing in a versatile forward capable of playing in multiple different positions, and Johnson very much fits the bill. Although you'll usually find him playing on the right, Johnson is more than capable of being utilized in any attacking position that the manager wants, as showcased by the graphic on screen. It should therefore come as no surprise that the likes of Chelsea, Atletico Madrid, West Ham, Aston Villa, Everton, Crystal Palace and Brentford all made several attempts to prize him away from the city ground, but for a variety of reasons, failed in their pursuits. You might be sat there thinking, why on earth are Forrest willing to let go of someone who's been with them since the age of 8 and is so highly rated on deadline day? And the answer is FFP. Whether we like it or not, selling players who've come through the ranks represents a pure profit, and if you've been paying attention, a lot of promising young talents are being let go by Prem sides because of this. As gut-wrenching of a blow this may be for Forest supporters, they can always take solace in the fact that Johnson ended up winning the Championship Young Player of the Season during their much-awaited promotion campaign, and also finished as their top scorer with 18 goals and 8 assists during that unforgettable year. He performed fairly well in the Prem too, as his pace and direct running proved to be a frequent threat for the opposition and helped him bag 8 goals and 3 assists, without which Forest would have very likely gone straight back down. That's not to say it was all rosy either. Johnson had a tough time prior to the World Cup break and got pelters for some of his performances, but that's to be expected from a youngster finding his feet in a new look side competing at the highest level of them all. His decision making evolved at the turn of the year, and that's precisely how he racked up impressive numbers across a variety of attacking metrics. By all accounts, Johnson is a seriously dedicated professional whose popularity in the dressing room is second to none, and when you couple that with his immaculate work rate, you've got yourself a talent for whom the sky is the limit. That being said, patience will very much be the need of the hour. The kids only had three full seasons in the professional game, with the first being in League One, second in the Championship, and third in the Premier League. The steep learning curve is only likely to continue, but thankfully Spurs have a forward line that won't be reliant on him for output as much as Forrest's was. I look forward to seeing him pin back opposition defenders with his driving presence, and I'm sure Ange Postecoglou will give him ample game time moving forward. Make sure to check out my Spurs playlist if you're new to my channel, subscribe if you found this video useful, and I'll catch you in the next one folks. Peace.